In this video tutorial, I'm going to cover how to set up your resources in Microsoft Project 2013. Uh, in this view, I already have a Gantt chart created. I've got my activities. I've got a higher level activity planning, and then I have work activities, application approval, and construction. Let's uh, open that up a little bit. There we go, so we can read it. Um, construction plans, reports, and so forth. Now over here on the side, we have resource names. Microsoft Project will allow you to directly type those in. So if you know Mike's going to be working on Activity A or take, taking responsibility for Activity A application control, you can just type in Mike's name. That's a little dangerous. Um, I'll show you why. Um, I recommend for my students that instead of typing directly into the Gantt chart, is that they go over to the View tab and choose Resource Sheet. And in the Resource Sheet, is where we can create a roster of our employees. Now I typed Mike in on the Gantt chart, so he automatically shows up here. But let me go ahead and enter the rest of my team in here. That'd be Holly and Amy and Sean, and then Ace Construction. Uh, we're going to outsource the construction to. So that's going to be a company, whereas the others are individuals. The default in Microsoft Project is that the type is work. Let's look at the options here: work, material, and cost. Well, Mike is certainly not a material item, he's a work item, so that makes sense. Cost would be if you outsource and you're getting a fixed cost for a portion of the work, which is what we're going to see with ACE construction. So work would be appropriate anytime the resource is going to be paid on an hourly basis or that we're going to keep track of the cost based on hours of labor. <clears throat> material, that would be if this resource has particular materials cost associated with them. If there's material associated with the activity, that would be different. We'd handle that over on the Gantt chart. Uh, I'm going to leave this blank for now because I can't think of any situations here where there would be maybe a computer or things that my team would need. So initials are very handy um, to put an abbreviation in. You can use anything you want. I'm going to change this one to ACE. Um, Microsoft Project will use those initials for um, reporting so the report won't get clogged up with all these big titles like ACE Construction. Group would be if I want to group the people together, like if there's three people that are senior and four people that are junior and so forth, I could create groupings as well. Max refers to how many hours per week that person can be scheduled. 100% means that based on a 40-hour work week, that person will work 40 hours. Now, Mike's pretty hardy, so I know he'll gladly work 100 and, I'm sorry, he will work 60 hours per week, which would be 150%. So if you change those percentages, and let's say Amy's half-time, she only works part-time 20 hours a week, I would set her at 50%. So these percentages control how much these people will be scheduled to work each week. The standard rate is their labor rate. Let's put Mike in at $24. Let's put Holly, Amy, and Sean in at $22. Now I'm not doing that for Ace Construction because they're, again, a fixed price. They're going to build the building for me. I'm going to change it to cost. They told me that they would build the entire building for $150,000, so I'm going to just put cost on them. I'm not going to put the $150,000 right now here at this level, but I am going to create the overtime rates. So overtime for Mike would be uh, $36, and overtime for Holly would be $33, 33 and 33 Now, Microsoft Project will use these rates, and if we go back over to the Gantt chart, against the number of hours that's going to take to create those activities to generate your budget. So let's go back to putting these names in here. For construction plans, that's going to be Holly. As soon as I click in the resource name, the little drop down arrow appears because I have a list out there. And sure enough, there's the list that I typed in on the resource sheet. And I'm going to click off Holly for construction plans. And just hit enter and it'll take that. <clears throat> Traffic study. Traffic study is actually going to be done by Amy, so I can check her off and click um, uh, the enter. Now her 50% came up to remind me that she's not she's working less than a full week, which is going to affect my schedule significantly. Now I'm going to go down to my service availability check. Uh, that's actually going to be Sean, but instead of doing the drop down, I can also start to type Sean, and it comes up. So Microsoft Project has a lot of little conveniences. Sean's also taking care of the staff report. Uh, commission approval is by Mike. Constructions by Ace. So as soon as I type the A, Ace Construction came up. Now occupancy is Mike's responsibility, but what if I started to type Mike as M-I-A-K-E, the 
French spelling of Mike, I guess. Um, it will allow me to do that, and that would be incorrect, because now when I go back to my resource sheet, I see my team as including this Mike, M-I-A-K-E, which is wrong. So that's why I caution my students to be very careful. Now I have to delete that resource, go back to my Gantt chart, and do it correctly as Mike, M-I-K-E. So typing them in works to your, to your Gantt chart, but if you make a fat finger mistake, it's going to show up everywhere, and then you're going to have to go back in and create it, uh, correct it. So I would strongly recommend that we uh, that you enter these on your resource sheet first, and then come back and enter it here. So I hope that helps you get a start. Again, you can double click on a row that's an activity, and the details will open, and we'll have our general information. There's the title, percent complete, so we can keep track of the progress. Auto schedule, which is always good predecessors we had already entered but we could enter uh, additional ones we can enter lags or leads resources there's Amy there's her labor cost multiplied out advanced as soon as possible that's how how it will schedule it and some other things you can change notes just an open notes field and then custom fields now I want to show you one other thing we're going to go down here to Ace Construction who gave us a fixed price bid predecessors resources they told me it's going to be $150,000 to complete this piece of work. And I'm going to, oh, that's $1.5 million, sorry, $150,000. <clears> Keep entering that, there we go. And now my budget will include the labor hours for each of these people and Ace Construction's fixed cost bid of $150,000. I go up to Project, Project Information. I see my start date. I click on Statistics. I see my start date and now my finish date. It'll be finished January 29th, 2018. It'll take 235 days. We'll work 720 hours. And the total cost of the project, $166,640. So now that we have our resources in place, uh, we can really look at all the numbers. I uh, hope that helps. Give that a try.